press the kids and just break the ball. They like hit it with the head. When we get to the Department of Social Services, they can update us on that. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wonderful Thanksgiving. Whether that's Bill, who was sick, and you can stay. Dad was out. I kind of like this one. Start with our minutes. Um, everybody had uh, read them, and we have any uh, other amendments? Yeah, move them. Got us at second. Uh, any any changes? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, carry those. Uh, get to HS1, uh, resolution authorizing the budget by Department of Social Services and Probation Department for the STSJP plan. Um, this is just having to do with uh, moving that work over to um, probation from TSS. Correct. Any other details that we need to know? Not really, right? I think so. It's pretty Can I get a, get a first on that? Motion? Take a motion. Second. Anybody? I'll take it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Just two. That was easy. Uh, budget mod, Department of Services to accept NCP Employment Program grant award. I'll move in the stream. Stacey, Anna? I don't expect they gave us more money this year, so that's fabulous. $7,491, no local share. That's pretty easy. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, carry that. Right, today is 12 3. Uh, just three. So, uh, resolution authorizing budget modification, Department of Social Services to transfer, transfer funds to mileage reimbursement services division. Uh, I'll we'll report motion on that. I'll move it. Stacy. Um, just what it says in the memo. Lots more transports with more kids in care. And this will get us through the end of our year. Uh, <coughs> so I know that we've brought this up and batted it around a couple of times. At what point are we crossing the line of spending more money and not being efficient in renting vehicles to have a pool of cars for DSS? Uh, by the health department's formula, you get uh, around 13000 in mileage paid a year. It makes more sense to buy a car to the side of it. And that is on our radar for 2020. Yeah. Um, the new parking lot will allow that to occur. And our uh, it's formally reported to the, the committee that uh, we're taking our child welfare assistance. Great. Caseworker assistants, CWAs, um, who do transporting. Um, and we're relocating them to Fulton, uh, to Catholic Charities, where we also have paid transporters. We just released the RFP that will be awarded after the first of the year. And once all those players are in the same facility, we have software that makes things more efficient. Our next step will be to look at particularly those caseworker assistants because uh, they are definitely traveling. Uh, Enterprise told me over 12,000 miles a year and 13,000 that's, yeah, we're way over that with those positions. And then we'll start looking at uh, how much we need as a fleet in our uh, caseworkers that work out in Mexico. So. I would say by the end of 2020, we should realize some savings in transports. Okay. You may realize more turnover, though, as people aren't making as much. That's, and they warned me. You know, I've met with our caseworker assistants, and they said I won't be uh, 
able to work here if I don't get mileage checks. So um, that would be their choice. So. Uh, two though. First one is uh, the fleet manager position did is in the current Still in the budget. Okay, would that apply to, to this type of discussion? Yeah, we'd look. We'd look uh, well, it depends on which comes first, so leasing for them or hiring a fleet manager. But that would be a an expertise we would look at to help okay. own, own the uh, contract. The DSS would be underneath that. The, the whole fleet. Yeah. Okay. Um, and secondly, uh, I noticed the, the, the transfer here is out of adoption subsidy service division. Can you talk a little bit about why that is not needed? And if so, was it adjusted for next year's budget request? It is adjusted. It is okay. adjusted. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, kids age out, um, so we no longer are paying subsidies. Okay. And is it is there less coming on than have that are leaving? Is that why the? You know, I I, uh, I can't speak to that. I'd have to dig deeper on that data. I would assume so, um, although it seems like we've had a bit of an uptake on um, kids being adopted. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? We already have a first and second, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? HS4 resolution awarding professional services contract senior transportation services for the office of the aging. Do I look for a motion to the first and second first step? Move it. Sarah, you Yes, this is our the transportation that we provide to the congregate meal sites as well as to the Lacona Soup Kitchen because we no longer have a um, meal site up in that area of the county. The one respondent came in a little bit higher than I had budgeted for. Um, so it is $12,524 more than um, what was in my 2020 budget, but it is it provides transportation to the congregate sites um, one to two days a week, as well as provides a short shopping trip for the seniors if they register for that benefit. Part of this is funded with unmet needs funding, and because we got started late in 2019. We will be able to carry some of that money over into 2020 to help cover the cost of this. But also, I wanted to bring to your attention, um, we've had <coughs> transportation to the Hannibal congregate meal site since 2016, and no one has um, ever participated in that transportation, to where I never want to take services away or a potential service. Um, if we don't want to go fully with this, um, I would recommend that we remove Hannibal, which is $7,531.80. Um, then we would just be a little over five, a little under $5,000 over my budget this year. Again, I never want to take services away, but it has never been utilized. We have publicized it. We've sent um, letters to um, village town offices. We've put um, flyers in grocery bags at the grocery store, at the pharmacy to let them know of transportation. We've sent direct mailings to um, people, participants at the congregate site as well, and the site manager also, you know, publishes it that transportation is available. Well, they've never had anybody utilize that. But people are still showing up for the meals. Yes. Okay. Well, then why would we keep much? So. It's not on a pay per service or pay for a visit type of deal, right? It's just a right. contract. Correct. So although they never send a bus, we still pay them for it. Correct. Correct. Because there's always the potential that someone would be registered for that service, so they do have someone available. But they probably divert that person to other transportation needs on that day and when there's no registered riders. When you say no one has ever used the service, how far back does that go? 
since 2016 when we added Hannibal in the in the list. And those sound like you're taking the service away and the consumers took the service away by not using it. Um, well, that's not part of this resolution to remove that other one, though, right? Correct. That would be, would that be a, 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 mo a move that we would have to make, a motion, that, or is that something that you would just, could just do? Well, it's part of the RFP that Hannibal was in there, and we can make any changes because it's just a request for proposal. So if we chose to eliminate Hannibal, um, the, the committee could amend the contract here. And pull it down to the legislature in the meantime. Sir, we contact the vendor and say we want to remove that schedule. So it's okay with you with the contract. Do it that way. Okay. And then uh, that also give you time to have any discussions with the legislator from that district you need to. Well, I mean, if we haven't used it since 2016, then that's, you know. Is it correct? Sir? Thirty-five thousand plus thousand dollars. So, to make an amendment that we remove Hannibal from the contract. Okay. I can second. I'll second it. Discussion. Okay. Um, this is an RFP. It doesn't need to go through this committee to approve an amendment, right? Wouldn't they just smoke the contract, which we then would approve on the floor, or we may have yeah. approved every every amendment, every. <coughs> it could be done on the floor too. I'm just either here or on the floor. It'd be easier here. Well, it is only that you know, we are moving <coughs> an offered service to an area without the representative being here to discuss it. I yeah. would feel more comfortable discussing with them first and then bringing it forward. Um, I, I understand that it's lack of I just wouldn't know that if it was in my district and it was something that was available, I'd like an opportunity to speak to that. And if it's here, I mean, I guess the floor you can but personally, I think we just. Uh, that, that's my take. I, I wouldn't recommend. So we wanted. It would be best to do that before Thursday because it could happen Thursday. Sure. Yeah, at at So you could pass it through today as as is. And then we'll talk to the yeah, then amendment on the floor. That way, the representative from that area and the company can weigh in. I think Tim's point is well taken. Go ahead, Brad. So right now, no one's ever registered to use this service the last four years. Now we make this change, which seems pretty sensible. Now the one person does pop up and say, "Hey, I want transport." How would we do? How would we transport that person? We wouldn't be able to. We'd love to see anymore. if there's other options. Um, I do know that call and ride is in the area, but and we would probably look to see if we could get them registered on call and ride to the okay. site. But we wouldn't have any other transportation option at this time for them. Okay. But then we would pay seven thousand dollars a year for one person. Right. Which would average out to thirty-five thousand dollars. So. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's a really nice ride. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's not. I really don't know. We'll buy another car at that rate. <laughs> we'll just get another car for the SS and have them do it. <laughs> So it's for now. Well, um, Jim, do you want to um, withdraw your motion or you want to keep it? Out of respect for the legislator there, I would withdraw, but not out of concern about the vendor. I mean, hell, if we, if we haven't had anybody write it in three and a half, four years, we got to have a little common sense here. Yeah. You know, but out of respect for the legislator, I would withdraw, but not for, not for respect to the RFP. Right. You know. That's not the way we do business. If, if we're doing RFPs and somebody's not meeting our needs, we're not going to sit there and say, well, he's a nice guy. I'm going to leave it there. Well, he is on finance, so hopefully he'll be here in a couple of days so he can address it as well. Um, can you perhaps discuss it with legislator Wilma? I'd be happy to. So I would fall. Just okay. so it's noted uh, for that reason. Yeah. And that's appropriate. Okay. Um, any other discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, HS5 is a resolution authorizing professional services contract to amend to increase family advocacy and support services contract. Did you want to vote on the inheritance? We did. We actually withdrew. He withdrew the 
amendment. Tom amendment. had made a motion on on the resolution itself to begin with. This would be I think we just voted on that. Oh, you just voted on that. Okay, I'm sorry. I was typing up this thing. It's okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you short hair. I'm a little worried. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you want to brief us on this a little bit? Sure. Before. This is, so Nicole Combsy is traveling back from her holiday, so can't be here today. Is on the mental hygiene side of our house, and we've had a uh, contract with Hillside, and um, HS five and six are actually kind of companion resolutions. Uh, but we are asking to increase uh, in, in resolution um, HS5, uh, we are uh, asking for another $6,780 to cover uh, program revenue losses uh, for Hillside. There's a transition occurring to a um, about Medicaid transition. So from children's waiver, they've called it um, over to uh, the behavioral health system transformation. And that was actually supposed to kick in in January, and now it's been put off until July. So we're trying to help uh, that program with that deficit. Uh, for a motion. Make a motion. Any second? I'll make it. Then you have a question, Tim? Yeah, so so is it correct to say then that the amount that is contracted is below the budgeted amount, so we're looking for permission to pay them additional over the contracted amount, but you can handle it within the budget? Yes, there's no local share. We handle it within the budget. And actually, uh, if you look at uh, HS6, um, the contract amount will remain at or less than the original approved 2014 uh, amount of 53898 So I could. So why are we, I just don't understand the process, but why does the budget line have more than the amount of the contract? Like why is there even room to do this? I guess the question. If we're updating the budget on an annual basis, wouldn't that line be corrected to the contract? Correct, but it depends on how much state aid we get from the state. Okay. So that, uh, you know, we're, we're playing catch up here. Okay. It would also be that the the 19 contract was signed after the budget was adopted. So the budget was based on the prior contract. Right? Gotcha. So if you're saying that. So that what you're really doing is amending the maximum authorized, <clears throat> authorized expenditure within the contract to 42. Right. That assumes, though, that we got a reduced price this year than we had the previous year. Right? I mean, if you're saying the contract would not have decreased in order to have extra room in it for. Money, well, since it's all 100% uh, sure. reimbursed, of the word. That's all. it's not like it's a, a hit to the taxpayers um, sure. because of that difference. I guess I don't understand the question. Me either. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're assuming it's a one-year contract. Well, no, I, in budgeting, if we have a contract, usually you budget the contract amount. So if there's room in the budget line, and we're not budgeting the contract, is all I was trying to say. Yeah, and what I'm saying was that it, when the budget was adopted, it was based on the, on the 53 of the previous year. Then in, after the budget was adopted, the new contract was negotiated. They came and said, look, we can do this cheaper because right. some of the revenue is coming in. So that's why the contract was signed in 19 at 35 instead of 53. And we just didn't update the budget because we already passed. We wouldn't, we wouldn't Got it. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. That is absolutely correct. <laughs> I try to be. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions? And this will be our feed in 2020. Correct. All those in favor? Aye. And opposed? Okay. The HS uh, 6 is the is partner to that one, right? Correct. So. This is for the 2020 contract, that one was to add to the 2019. Follow up for a motion. Make it. Second. Um, any discussion? Yeah. So, why, why 
that's just from the approved 2014 amount? That's, um, because that's that was the, the original RFP. Okay. So yeah. for five years. Yeah, thank you. So this is the one year extension. What's the reason for not going to RFP after the fifth year? Seems like when we go to RFPs, we pay more. So the longer we don't do RFPs, I think we're better. <laughs> It's on record. Yeah, I'd say that's probably not the uh, stance that I would agree with. I mean, usually competition is a good thing for pricing. So. It's supposed to be. 90% of the time it is. You never got enough years under your belt to figure that one out. When it happens need, all the time. What happens is when you have maybe only one or two providers, um, they don't fear jacking the price on no. So you yeah, have five or six competitors, then it works out that you save money. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I'm against it. You're voting against it? Is that because of the five years? There, do you remember the reason for that, Veronica and Marty? There was actually a reason. I, I want to say it had to do with uh, the state OMH um, put out uh, a new. Oh yeah, yeah. They got conflicting direction. Right. The state, the state told them that these contracts aren't subject to professional service RFPs, and so Nicole went with that. Uh, I've since uh, corrected that, and that our local policy trumps that because the state doesn't require professional services anywhere to be RFP. That's something we at, at the county. That's, so, that's that's why that gets screwed up. Yeah, we really were not following our notes. She thought she was following the state direction. Well, I do, if I could, this this is the same department where we had this exact same discussion two years ago regarding those school based mental health positions and that one year extension. So, I mean, we know, I mean, I know, and I've been here more than four years, as the same length of all these folks, that that is required. We talked about this in this committee um, as well. So, I mean, I understand it's a local policy, and but that's, that's well known. I think. I'm going to stay in hell on that one. Okay. Thank you, then. Yes. Does anybody? Uh, okay, so uh, we already won on it? Yep. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, does everybody have HS7? Anybody not have the additional one? No. Is it in an email? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, this was. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm close. Do you have a one? I don't. Um, so this is a resolution authorizing budgetary modification office of the aging, additional expanded home, in home services uh, for the elderly, uh, grant funding. Um, Sarah, did you want to speak to this before we get a motion to move? Yes. Um, last Monday, I received an email from the state, um, an updated notice of grant award. They reallocated $55,000 of funding, um, and this is what it is. Uh, it's for the senior in-home program. We use it for Social Adult Day, Consumer Directed, as well as the age that goes into the home for the seniors. The reason there was money left, not all counties have been as successful as us in securing aids to go into the homes. So if they cannot expend all that money, the state will reallocate it. And we just happen to be um, a benef beneficiary of that this year. And um, so we have, um, it's for the state year, which would be April 1, 2019 through March 31, 2020. But because it's so late in the year, the state did say that we can carry it into 2020 as well beyond March 31. We are in a little bit over in our ISIP and our home care program this year, so it comes at a very appropriate time for us. What we have done in the past, we've been very diligent in making sure our hours are where they need to be for the home care, but sometimes seniors have canceled their day service. So we've been un underspent actually in that budget line the last few years. So when I met with Phil, I said, you know, can, you know, we're underspent because 
this is the reason. Um, the only way we can really get to that dollar figure is if we over allocate hours. So staff were very good and over allocating hours. So we, we actually, if this money hadn't come in, we would have been in a little bit of a deficit. So that's why we kind of moved it forward for right now, not waiting so that this money will be there to cover um, that overage for 2019, but we'll still have money moving into 2020 as well, which is going to help with the increase in the hourly rate for the A's next year. Um, our One of our agencies went up from $21 to $23 per hour, so that will would have had a negative impact on the number of hours we could provide um, for our participants, so this, this funding is helping to maintain the hours that they currently have as well. Can I move for a motion? A second? second? Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we're gonna scoot right to our department reports. Uh, starting with veterans. Good afternoon, everybody. So for the month of November, um, we had 552 contacts, processed 48 claims, um, and that's full claim packages. However, our walk-in days are pretty brutal now. Um, it's not just happening on Tuesday, which is the Allocated walk-in day, um, last week before Thanksgiving, my staff had 48 walk-ins between Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So that's a huge influx of veterans coming in for services. Um, we are having a bit of an issue with the VA outpatient clinic in Oswego, referring veterans to our office for things that we don't provide services for or control. Um, whether, that, whether they're upset with the VA for giving them the wrong medication or they need their eyeglasses fixed or um, other issues that don't pertain to what our services are. So I did meet with the outpatient clinic today to clear up um, when, when to recommend a veteran come see us. So I provided a big stack of business cards um, and what, are, what services our office provides. Um, huge influx in DSS referrals. Um, we are processing them as quick as possible. However, the issue with that is um, DSS is putting a, uh, a drop dead date for these referrals to come back to the caseworker. Um, I don't, and my staff don't operate on that schedule around the appointments that we already have scheduled. So um, along with that, we're getting some referrals that um, Maybe the person who's seeking assistance was married at one point between their four spouses to a veteran. Um, if they're not currently married to that veteran or did not remarry, then, then they would be eligible. So I think maybe we could get together and do an, an updated training with DSS like we did a year ago. Um, other things that I'm working on right now, so I've interviewed 18 students on Congressman Brindisi's military um, a, uh, uh, Education Academy uh, board. So we are interviewing students that want to go to the military academy. So that's been a really um, interesting endeavor that we've taken on to uh, help get congressional recommendations for kids in the district that want to go to military academies. Um, for November, for Veterans Day, we did uh, Fairgrade Elementary and Palermo. Um, so I did presentations at both of those schools, which was a lot of fun. Um, the kids were pretty interactive. Um, another thing that I'm looking at is the New Year's coming up, so new Veteran of the Year pro um, program to uh, start initiating nominations for those. Um, something that I've been thinking about doing is other counties have an Enterprise of the Year Award um, and a Patriot of the Year Award, and that Enterprise of the Year Award is for companies or corporations local to the municipality that provide support to veterans within the community, and the Patriot of the Year Award is for a non-veteran that provides um, above and beyond support for veterans in the community. Um, it would still be the same, you know, the same type of award ceremony, but we would expand a little bit to include maybe others in the community that provide services for veterans. So that 
um, will be discussed at the January VSAC meeting. And then depending on what this, the advisory board thinks is appropriate, we'll, we'll go from there on that. Um, and the last thing, so there are other counties where the, where the veteran service agency has a percentage of their budget paid by DSS. Um, and that is simply because the veterans, the veterans office assists in the Medicaid application process. So once the veterans are approved for a monetary award, it offsets the local share from DSS. So um, there are quite a few counties that there's at least four right now that are sending me their budgets so I can better understand what that process is. But because we're such a heavily assistance dependent county, that might be something worth looking into, especially with all the veterans that we do have that are on services provided through DSS that we do offset um, by providing benefits from the VA. So the more information that I have on that, I'll provide um, as they come in from the counties, but that would definitely be something to look at next year, not this year. So, but that's all I have for veterans. Have you been in discussions with? I'm still trying to understand how they're getting money from DSS. Um, and what, in one of the counties, it's 25% of their budget is being is being paid by <coughs> the Department of Social Services. And that is because they provide services utilizing the referral program and then applying for benefits to which the benefit is now coming from the VA and the benefit's not coming from social services. So, but all of those counties operate it differently. So when I do get the information, obviously I'll sit with Stacy and, and meet with her, but I found it quite interesting that that was a thing that's happening in some counties, but not all counties. I'm wondering how far that goes back. You, didn't you mention Medicaid? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when we established eligibility for Medicaid, now it's centralized. Um, we got 100% reimbursement from Medicaid from feds. And so those counties uh, may have just continued to support. And that might very that might very well be the case. I, I can tell you, I don't have any revenue streams that would allow us to contract with you. Um, well, I'm not exactly sure how it works, and I don't know if it's based yeah. off of revenue or what it is. But I do know that there's been a lot of discussion in the um, in the veteran service officer um, association that I'm in where the other veteran service officers are also trying to figure out exactly how this works before it's proposed or, Good. you know, or people are meeting with their county administrators or, you know, with DSS to try and finagle money elsewhere. But it is interesting that it's happening, but it's not across the board. It's not statewide. So mm -hmm. it's only certain counties. And I don't know if it's because people aren't aware of it or because those certain counties may have been grandfathered in at some point where that's always been a part of their budgeting process. We also way back. Well, not so way back, maybe 12 to 15 years ago, we used to get LAF, the local administrative fund, and we no longer get that. There's been a lot of shifts over the years. Um, you know, if you think about, we uh, facilitate um, the application to Social Security Disability, mm -hmm. um, and then once the award is made, um, we take money back to um, cover uh, those expenses uh, from their arrears, and um, but we don't provide Social Security any administrative funding. Uh, we're, we're actually unable to provide administrative funding when the scope of work is already covered under an entity. So, like, I couldn't give Social Security money because they're already being supported. It does. It does. Um, and lastly, I want to thank Legislator Frasic for uh, his assistance with getting six families full meals for Thanksgiving um, through his program. So we did have six families that were in need um, of meals, and they were provided those. So thank you for your assistance with that. I did the whining, and everybody else <laughs> gave stuff to me, and they got taken care of. So oh, please. Okay, now I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Sarah. Stay anything update? Well, we are winding down. Saturday is the last day for Medicare open enrollment. 
so we're winding down there. But um, that does not mean we're, we'll stop because everyone that we could delay for their appointments, um, because there were so many, were delayed. And those are people that maybe have a special enrollment due to having um, subsidies to help them with their prescription plans, as well as EPIC. So they're, they're, they've been delayed. So but the insurance counselors are still booked up for the month of December as well. So it's still crazy busy with that. And it'll move forward into uh, January as well, because once the plans are start being used in action, the, there's always issues um, at the pharmacy. You didn't tell me there's a deductible. Yes, there is a deductible. So, you know, I'm working through those issues that people may have with their plan um, rolling into the new year. So we, um, we're seeing probably not quite as many people because um, that we're, we're not putting in the, they're not putting in the extended hours that have been put in in the past um, with retirements. Um, new staff, they'll put in the additional hours but not extended hours. So that's where some of um, the people are not being served as they have in the past. And I can't make my employees work any more hours. Um, we probably will come in on Saturday though. And anyone that will come in on Saturday to try to, um, with that last push to make phone calls and make sure everyone that needs assistance has received that assistance. Um, we still, again, are still working on HEAP applications. HEAP, the official HEAP opened on November 12th. So all the new applicants, applications have been coming in. We're working on them, putting them through to social services as quickly as we can so that people are getting that assistance. Also, um, right in the middle of working on the four-year plan, the OFA four-year plan for the state. Um, this year is a four-year plan, so it's um, a pretty thick document to submit to the state on what we think we're going to be doing in the next four years. We utilize the information from the needs assessment surveys as well as customer satisfaction surveys as well as feedback from our advisory council um, to move forward with that. It's not that the state's providing any additional funding, but um, we will let them know how we plan on meeting over the next four years. That's due the 13th of this month. Um, we also, the, the two grants that we applied for, we did get the SHINE, the Senior Health Improvement Nutrition and Nutrition Education Grant. That's a $108,000 grant. Um, we'll be working to get the RFP out for professional services for that, as well as the Age-Friendly Planning Grant. That's an $80,000 grant. Also working to get an RFP for professional services for that grant as well. And that's kind of where we're at right now, what we've been working on in our office, just trying to maintain services that we have. Um, yesterday, there was one route closed only um, up in the, the North Country, so we're very happy that most everyone received their meals. They had just received an extra meal last week, though, um, a shelf-stable meal, so anyone who didn't have their home-delivered meal delivered yesterday did have um, additional food on hand from the extra delivery last week. So happy, happy to report that things are continuing on moving forward. Good. Thank you. Brian? All right. <coughs> um, I'm going to pass around the, um, you may or may not have seen, it's on our social media, I think it's on our webpage as well, but the Governor's Youth Council, um, he recently made an announcement that he had been anticipating doing. Um, he's planning on um, putting together a youth council, which he wants to have one representative from each state or each county. I'm sorry. Um, so there's going to be 62 kids who, from the age of 13 through 21, who will be um, serving New York State to be on this council. It's a two year council. Um, it's going to be run through the Association of New York State Youth Bureaus. Regionally, um, I'll run the central region piece of it. And the way it works is what I've given to you. Is the, um, is the document you can use for a guidance document that gives all the information as to what it's all about, how to apply, what the topics are that the, the youth are going to be discussing. Um, and this is all available electronically too for anybody that wants it. 
Um, and as you can see, I did have put why you would see it's marked up a little bit. That surprise, surprise, that the state announced today, they changed the dates on um, when anything is due. So it's kind of good. It does give more time for um, our, our youth to apply. Part of the um, next steps going through aside from getting the application through the portal is um, our workforce development board youth council is going to be the judges who will forward three nominations to the state. The state will pick the final representative from Oswego County. Um, so right now we're basically collecting the applicants and I'm giving it to you so that you can share it if you want it electronically. I can get it to you that low as well. It's on our social media, I believe it's on our webpage too. If not, it will be on there with the updated dates to go along with it. But absolutely, if you know anybody between the ages of 13 and 21, um, absolutely you should have them apply if, if possible. They're looking for a whole range of youth. They're not looking for anybody in particular. The governor has mentioned that you know he's, he's going to go. They're going to go through and look at everything that's on there. But they, he wants a good makeup of the kind of the state to go across to be this. His initial, um, he mentioned this this council last year in, his, in the state of the state, and that's part of what he wants to do again this year. Is he'd like for them to be available to be at the state of the state this year. Um, so we'll see how that all unfolds. But I just wanted to share that with you, and, and all the information is there, including the press release from OCFS that went out about this. So um, aside from that, uh, about two weeks ago, we did have our community services forum at the Elks Club. Uh, we had about 62 agencies who were there that day, over 120 flock in um, crowd that were available to learn about different um, services that are available in Oswego County. So thank you for all that attended or participated in that event. It's actually a series of four that we're doing, um, working with Stu Amel from City. They did one this summer at City. We just did one. The good deal is to do one each quarter, so there'll be two more this year. They'll be at different areas focusing on different um, audiences to go forth with that. So that was what we just did with that. Um, knock on wood, the well and septic system have been completed at Camp Zerby. And next week, um, b and is going to be out there to do what they need to do to get them both up and running to where we're at. But um, it's been a long process, but that's completed. Um, I just received an email um, from Leanne that, I don't know if you've heard this, that it's December 10th and 11th is when they're Supposed to announce the CFAs. Um, I don't know anything more. I've heard anything more. Have you got any info? Yeah, I don't think anything. Um, but, anyways, Camp Palace is on the CFA right now for that. So, that's one of the things we're waiting on. I believe yesterday was the day that we had to submit our first round of paperwork for the Ready Project. So, for Camp Palace and for uh, Independence Trail, we had to submit the initial paperwork going forward to the state as to. Those two grants that we were um, lucky to receive that we, they announced last month. And then lastly, I was just going to tell you I've been working with Dave Lloyd um, and some of the other industries to look at the skill-based education piece that um, working with our schools, our high schools, to put a focus on trying to get a curriculum together um, with some of the school districts to being offering, you know, similar to PTAC, but looking at your juniors and seniors as well to um, what, what within the curriculum can we put together that they can take while they're actually in school, maybe not if they're not in PTAC or et cetera, that they'd still be able to prepare themselves and have different industries coming in to uh, work along with them. It's not really a secret. If you listen to you know a lot of them talk, that the Bells is going to have a lot of retirements in the next couple of years, as well as many of them. Um, they refer to some things like you, or, uh, electricians and unicorns. In other words, they're out there, but you can't find them. Um, so letting our young people know that, you know, instead of just directly um, forcing everyone off the college or nothing, that there is going to be a lot of opportunity out there. So we're working um, with the industries right now to work with the school districts to be more open to having a pathway available for those students to choose to go back. Um, other than that, we're just simply busy as well with the holiday season coming up with different things that all our uh, leadership groups and such are doing along with that. So it's been Pretty busy with different activities. The tree lighting last week in the city of Oswego was a large event, so we're moved on from that to the next event. So that's about it. Good. Thank you. Uh, Stacy. So <clears throat> I want to thank you again for uh, having 
support for the parking lot at DSS. Um, it has really increased morale um, <clears throat> as I came through after I put an email out to folks. Um, I had a caseworker who was circling, um, circling, circling, circling. Um, and then, of course, pulling in today uh, with all the snow. Uh, we've lost, you know, about 15 spots. I counted how many spots we lost. Um, I, a few days after uh, we announced, um, one of Veronica's gals thanked me because uh, she hates having her doctor's appointment in the morning and coming back to find no parking, and she had had to circle. So people are really excited, and again, I just really want to thank you. Um, I also, uh, you might have heard Brad and I talking um, that we had a morning break, and like me, it just, it, it, you know, it happened over the holiday weekend. Um, Where was it? It was on the Spring Street side towards the back of the building as it comes so in. So it wasn't in the building? No. It, no. It was under the pavement. There's literally water boiling off the pavement. I would imagine at some point, because that uh, the building does go down below the ground level, at some point, if it hadn't been turned off, we would have ended up with flooding. Right. What do you think? Yeah. So, um, so you know, it, all I can say about that is uh, John Booker is absolutely awesome in my eyes. He is uh, always responsive to the best of his capacity. I saw him this morning, you know, uh, so here comes Monday morning after a long holiday. Of course, we've got hordes of people coming through our doors um, after a long holiday. And so they've got all the snow removal to deal with, um, a big backhoe to dig up and replace um, this pipe. And what did you tell me? Um, so we, we had to do that? It wasn't uh, yeah, it was on our municipal? Side. It was on our side. The village shut off the water main so uh, that we could. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. But we had no water for our bathrooms. Um, and BNG brought all that in, brought us drinking water. Um, and they got it fixed by 10 o'clock. So. They've had a lot of practice in that machine. Yeah. <laughs> it was fortunate it happened where it did because the shutoff was right there. And it was where the break occurred was outside, and, but it was underneath the pavement for that back, you know, on Spring Street, that east yeah. entrance there. So it was, it was just entirely serendipitous, everything. But only had to, if you see something, say something to the little passerby that saw that and alerted our, you know, the village people who were near the river to get over there. Village people. The village people. They're <laughs> <laughs> still alive. <laughs> yes, 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 you know, <laughs> You've seen something say something about let somebody know it's something that simple. Yes. So the toilets were flushing again by 10 a.m. Um, and I know way too much now about the habits of people in the morning. <laughs> so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, but you know, Marty was really the Too champion. Late. Yeah. Marty was really the champion. Um, you know, she stepped right up Monday morning. I had uh, some kind sensitive issues I was attending to. And she made sure, you know, everything got posted correctly for over water fountains. And those things, we, we still don't have portable water, so no drinking water, but B&G has brought in gallons and, uh, of water and, you know, paper, uh, plastic cups, and all kinds of stuff. You know, John. And, and his resources were stretched. Plus, he told me Monday morning, I uh, pops up a delivery of how many pamphlets of paper did we get? That was delivered. Oh, like a oh, hundred? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So a big tonnage of paper at his BNG facility. So, yeah, it was it was a wild uh, morning for BNG, and yet our toilets were flushing by 10 a.m. So. Um, we have, you know, I have an awesome team of department heads uh, that uh, we support each other, and um, it's it's really amazing. So, you know, so you still don't have potable water, though. You said okay. the boil water, boil water order until at least until tomorrow, unless they get a, a clear test back today. Still. 
So, you know, we, you gotta let the faucets go big and there's gotta be some chlorination routine to the yeah. pipes and there's you know, a, a lot of details um, to pay attention to. And again, our BNG folks uh, arise to the occasion. We, uh, did Rich and, and uh, Spencer start last year? They've been fairly recent with us. Uh, a couple, within the last couple yeah. of years. Yeah, and uh, so they're assigned right to us. And uh, those two young men, um, they, they, they are always hustling, always hustling. So, any other questions? On no. On um, Monday, uh, we have 10 new caseworkers. We're going to be welcoming uh, into our midst. We're you know, really excited um, to, you know, have those folks come in and, and start with us. We have a new training supervisor. Uh, we lost a senior caseworker that was our training supervisor, uh, Sarah Knapp. Uh, she went to work for Gina uh, over at WPIC. Uh, business. Yeah, it's where it's, it's, but it's a bigger department. I always forget business. Um, oh, yes. Yes, there we go. Business and community relations. There we go. So, um, so they're very lucky to have uh, Sarah, and she's quite teamed. Um, but uh, so we moved another senior into that position, and so this will be her first time uh, with our, our new recruits coming on board. Um, you know, again, we're losing about a third um, before uh, the first year is up. Typically, we're losing uh, about a third even before uh, right at the eight week to 10 week mark. Um, you know, this is not for everybody, but for uh, those that have a heart for our mission and a commitment, um, we have uh, some wonderful folks. I had shared an email uh, with the committee uh, before the holidays, and uh, uh, that was uh, such a, you know, wonderful customer to our new training that a worker who uh, is uh, just about a year with us handling an infant fatality and getting uh, those kinds of praise from the state when we've never had the state respond like that to one of our fatality reports. It was just uh, pretty incredible. So, you know, I, I was hoping that would reassure the committee that um, although we're still seeing that one third turnover in the very beginning here, um, it's because it, this is not work cut out for everybody or their motives, uh, their motivation to be a caseworker um, may not be uh, quite in the right place for them. Um, so, uh, but those that are making it and those that are getting all that wonderful training from the state and from within our own ranks um, are really uh, doing fabulous. So. We're starting to kind of see uh, the culture turn a bit. Um, and with that, uh, my last uh, little brief um, is the work that our staff development uh, coordinator and Marty are doing. You may recall that uh, yes. Veronica found a way, uh, whoa, how come we didn't know we could get 100% reimbursement on our staff training coordinator position? And so uh, you supported that. Uh, we have Stephanie in place. Um, that has been a great relief uh, to our deputy commissioner. Um, so it was helpful to me um, because uh, there's only so much I can move on to Marty's plate when she had all of that. And um, so now Marty has really embraced uh, the trauma-informed care. Um, I saw that uh, uh, the health committee um, had a, a presentation um, so just <laughs> wanted to make mention um, that we are on board uh, with that initiative and um, our directors met yesterday. Marty, do you want to say just a few words about uh, the vision we have and where we're heading? Yeah, um, I'm working on the uh, Oswego County Trauma-Informed Collaborative, which Stu Amell is also part of. We've got Chantel Eckert and a few others from the health department. We've got both city BOCES there, um, other people from other county departments as well, um, trying to bring in law enforcement. We did get probation to the table, um, looking for some faith-based community members as well. 
um, to try to educate the community about trauma, about what it is and how it impacts people's lives, um, how we as professionals and as people in the community can try to have better interactions with people who may have experienced trauma in the past um, so that we can have better outcomes, um, build better positive working relationships with them so that um, they can move more quickly and more readily toward the point that they need to be in their lives. Um, but that will take a lot of work, a lot of communication, change in how we talk with people, how we um, change our, our mind's focus on how people ended up in the situations that they're in. Um, that's a big part of the, the challenge that we're facing, um, both within the service community as well as the general population. So we're just getting rolling, developing training, um, and we're going to be rolling out a, a Train the Trainer course in March for um, any county department as well as others that might want to train people to train others in trauma-informed care, so. Marty, that's, um, that's a great comment. I wanted to ask you about, at, at one point when we're gonna, uh, we're gonna summarize here, but the um, trauma-informed collaboration that's, that coalition that's put together by the health department, who's the point of contact from DSS for that? From DSS would be me. Okay. Yeah, they're called the champions. Yeah. The co-chairs yeah. for the collaborative are Chantel Ackert yeah. and I Christina Wilson. And there's a meeting on the 18th, December 18th, over at City County. I'll give you one on one on that. Okay. Thank you. So on to homeless issues. Um, you know, it's, there's been escalating uh, costs to housing our homeless. Um, there's been mandates from the state that has impacted our response to homelessness. Um, and what we've seen is fraud as a result. Uh, people calling us after 4 o'clock or after 4.30 on a Friday um, and going into a um, motel because that's the only shelter we have. And then um, ending up, you know, on Monday, uh, not following through, not uh, people have given false uh, identifications, um, or we find that it's one of our clients who does have an apartment and just wanted to experience a new environment for the weekend. Sure. Why. But um, so we've uh, really worked hard to look at a warming center, which is another thing we can do. And um, I'm really pleased that Victory Transformation has stepped up to the plate. So this winter, when um, we're under 32 degrees, um, we, and it's code blue, um, why uh, Dawn Whitaker and uh, Victory has two men's shelters um, that are always full, um, and they do a wonderful job. And um, some of those guys are just uh, really needing the opportunity uh, to um, have success in their life. And they will be paid to go down and open up the center um, to be that warming station. Uh, what we predict is those folks who just want a motel room will say, eh, later, no, no thanks. So I think we're going to see our numbers drop with uh, shelter stays. Um, and uh, we're, we're so pleased uh, that victory. We, we approached every single agency. Um, we promoted this through our um, Oswego County Homeless Coalition coach and uh, through our regional um, uh, continuum of care folks. And we just could not get anybody um, to open a warming center up. Um, Madison County has kind of, they, they have the churches do it. Um, I'm reluctant to actually have uh, churchmen and women not knowing what they're, you know, if they actually are coming in from the cold, um, uh, sometimes what we experience uh, are folks who uh, have some pretty severe mental illness um, or addiction issues. Um, Dawn and her folks are uh, able to really handle that. 
Um, and Dawn herself is a uh, licensed social worker at NSW, and she um, would come right down uh, if it's something that uh, her folks can't take care of. So we also created right some some opportunity uh, for some guys to be able to make some money. Uh, and all of those code blue expenses are all reimbursed by the state. So uh, we're, we're pretty excited to see that launch um, and get that off the ground. Uh, Is the state promoting things like that in order to try to reduce the fraud? Because they must be aware of the fact that the fraud's happening everywhere. Yeah, well, you know, in the bigger uh, communities and cities, they have a centralized intake and yeah. a person 24-7. Right. We're just not big enough to have that, and in the really small, small counties, um, they use their CPS on call uh, to respond, and so they can look things up, and they can, you know, it, they know the population pretty well. We're that middle of the road. We're a mid-sized county where uh, there's no way we can put that. I mean, our, our CPS workers are responding to a dozen calls. Um, they have absolutely no time. We've had to split the weekend up for on-call so that the worker who gets all the on-calls on Saturday has Sunday to follow up, and the person on-call Sunday has Sunday and Monday to, to do, uh, uh, you know, visits and, and calls. So, so is that only for men, though, because no. of victory? They, they can handle Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, the warning center would be for anyone. Just, just for my personal edification to know if I ever had a homeless veteran or someone who needed it. Is there one one? Well, besides that, okay. Is there transportation to these warning centers? Mm -hmm. Okay. Two one one takes care of it all. Okay. I'll, uh, I have a bunch of cards. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We had to have a twenty four seven response from the regional continuum of care. So. All of the counties that are part of our region um, are all uh, down into 211. Victory won't do children, though, right? It has to be adults. If it's a family. Correct. That is correct. Um, but the women with children that come in uh, out of the cold, it, it's, yeah, I mean, most of that is DV, and so we have really good DV supports in place with OCO. Um, there's never a problem getting shelter for women and children. <clears throat> and I think that was it for me. Go ahead. I do have one question for you on that. Earlier around in the meeting, you mentioned there's an uptick in adoptions, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's a great thing. Uh, we want to talk to talk about that maybe for a minute or two. And uh, one specific question I have for you on it: then with the uptick in um, adoptions, and I know that some of the children once they're adopted, you know, for whatever circumstances, they may be the families that adopt them may still be eligible for stipends. Is that paid for by the county, or is that the state, or is there the uh, local share in the state, or how does that work? I'm just a little brief. Okay, so. Um I'm not sure that the uptake is just the way cases cycle through. Uh, we have to achieve permanency within 18 months uh, for kids in care. And uh, we just had a series of, of folks who also were willing uh, to surrender children. Um, so there's been an uptake in um, the number of kids in foster care. So then the, do you expect then, because of that 18 month period, to be an uptick in the, the adoptions as right. well? Okay. That's, That's what we're thing. seeing. Yep. Okay. So then what about the funding? Is it local share? Is it? And if you're not prepared for now, that's fine. Normally, well, you guys come in here and you just yeah. start. No, no, no. Right. 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 We, re we receive 50% from the state of New York for okay. adoption subsidy. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right, look for the appropriate motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh,